Welcome, everybody, to our 12th man production studio here at Kyle Field. We are with head soccer coach G. Guerrero on the Aggie Soccer Show. An interesting schedule for Texas A&M this week. They had to go out west to play Portland on Friday, then came back home to play another West Coast team, but it was in College Station. It was against Cal State Northridge on Sunday. So two West Coast teams, one on the road, one at home, and the one out west uh, in Oregon against Portland. I mean, it's a marquee matchup when Texas A&M and Portland get together. And it is for so many reasons, rankings, uh, student and fan support. I mean, these are two marquee programs in collegiate soccer, and the game shaped up that way. Well, it is, and uh, you know, Portland, obviously, we have a, a ton of respect for them. Uh, last year, they came into, into our environment, into a, a full house, and uh, for the last, I think, eight years in a row, maybe more, it's been Texas A&M and Portland 1-2, 2-1 in, uh, mm -hmm. in home attendance. So. The, the commitment by, uh, by the programs and the commitment by the fans who support those programs is, uh, has been exceptional. We really felt good going into it. It was a, uh, it was a tough match all the way around. You know, to go up and play in their environment, they, you know, they came here last year. We beat them 3-1 to one at our place. We go up there, well, it's raining, and it's uh, <laughs> going to be a little bit chillier, and it's uh, a little slicker, and it's, of course, it, it's to uh, the home field advantage for, uh, for the pilots. And they're a, they're a super team. Uh, we got off to a bit of a slow start, but uh, some really great play defensively by uh, by our back line. Chris Arnold, uh, you know, our our All-American goalkeeper, goes out early in the uh, in the first half. But Kelly Dyer, who's uh, been an All-Region keeper for us in the past, steps in and uh, really does a good job of uh, of kind of keeping a lid on it in the first half. Uh, we finished off the first half with a with a good flurry of shots and really kind of got ourselves back in the game. Had a had good chances several times with Whitney Hooper putting herself in good positions a few times. And then uh, second half, uh, a little bit more of the same. Portland uh, is able to uh, score a really nice goal by uh, slotting a ball into just a, a very slight you know, six-inch space. Their player gets a toe on and knocks it into the, in, into the near post. And then uh, a couple good saves by their goalkeeper to uh, keep the shutout. And unfortunately, we go up to uh, an undefeated number three ranked team and we, uh, we fall one nothing. But it's one of those games that we think that we can learn from. It'll make our players, it really will make our players better. And the experience of playing a, a split weekend, a mm -hmm. split weekend being one game on the road, one game at home, right. that's something our players have got to get used to fast because it happens in the Big 12 schedule. As a matter of fact, it happens this yeah, coming weekend have it now. <laughs> in the Big 12. So that was one of the reasons why we did that was to prepare the players for it. And obviously going all the way to Portland, Oregon, and then coming back to College Station is further than we're going to have to go this, this time around. But... We were, we were uh, excited about getting back to play Northridge on, on uh, Sunday night, get back onto our surface, and uh, a little bit of a slow start in the first half. We're up 1-0 uh, off of a free kick from Bree Young, puts into a dangerous position, goes off the uh, a Northridge uh, defender's head. He's either going to go off of her or he's going to be on frame, and uh, ends up in the back of the net. But then second half, we come out, and uh, I think we were really hitting on all cylinders. Beth West, Bree Young really did a great job in the middle of the park to get our rhythm going, and then... Uh, you know, in the end, it's five, a five-nothing win. It's five goals by five different Aggies. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it kind of uh, highlights some of the uh, the many weapons that we have. And again, another good night defensively. Kelly Dyer gets the shutout and goal, and uh, we finish our non-conference part of the season now with a seven and two mark. Mm -hmm. Certainly a difficult task to play number three on the road. Those are emotional matches. A lot of energy spent. In the come back home and score five goals, uh, quite impressive in itself. Well, I think it speaks well for the, the character of our players and the ability for our players to uh, get stronger over a weekend. Uh, you know, we, we put a lot of pride in the, in the fitness of our team. We put a lot of pride in the nutritional information that we provide them. But, mm -hmm. you know, you can only lead a horse to water. They, they've got to be able to, to do it and, and do the important things. And, and our, I, I'm proud of our players for the way that they, uh, they do respond to uh, challenges and the way that they, uh, they come back from every game. All right, the Aggies look very good as we now head into Big 12 Conference play. We'll talk about that when we come back. The Aggie Football Show with head coach Mike Sherman is your all-access pass to Texas A&M football. Join me, Will Johnson, for exclusive interviews, highlights, and behind-the-scenes footage of all your favorite coaches and players. 
Tune in to hear Coach Sherman's breakdown of the team's performance and everything else surrounding his program. Check your local listings for airtime or go to AggieAthletics.com for program information. Don't miss an episode. Watch the Aggie Football Show with head coach Mike Sherman every week throughout the fall season. The 2011 NCAA Indoor Championship coming this spring to Aggieland. Welcome back to the Aggie Soccer Show. Big 12 play is here on Friday. It's Texas A&M and Colorado. Coach mentioned it's one of those split weekends again, that Colorado match right here in College Station. But then on Sunday, A&M hitting the road to play the Nebraska Cornhuskers. So you split it up two weekends in a row, and, you know, Big 12 play has arrived. What do you expect out of the Buffaloes? They're up first, but also a little bit what could happen on that road trip up to Lincoln to play the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Well, you know, we've won the most Big 12 championships by far, uh, having won 10 of them in the past 13 years. But uh, Colorado has, has won trophies, uh, and Nebraska has won trophies there. Both teams are very well organized and very well coached, and we know that both of them will be very motivated to play uh, to play A and M. Uh, and for us, with uh, both those teams, ironically, these are the two teams that are leaving the uh, leaving the True. Big Twelve, so we get a chance to mm -hmm. have a go at them first. But to start out on Friday night, Colorado coming in off of a, really off of a huge win, a great win not only for them but also for the conference, uh, knocking off a top ten team uh, with UCLA. Mm -hmm. UCLA, who's been to, uh, gosh, I think the last seven college cups. So for, uh, for the Buffs to get that win in overtime on a, uh, a terrific uh, ball up, ball back, and a, and a finish by a player who had only been on a, a little while in the match, I think shows the depth of their team that they have, but also uh, you know, the competitive nature of that team to, to be able to, to win a game like that. So they'll come in with a lot of confidence, obviously with a lot of fire to try to, uh, to get out, off to the best start they can. We want to get up the, be the best possible start we can. Uh, playing in front of the 12th man to start the season is a, is a big thing for us, and uh, playing at our place is, uh, is hugely important, and we want to do the very best that we can with that opportunity. And uh, you know, so Friday night, 7:30. Uh, we, you know, we really are hoping that the 12th man is out in force. I know that pl our players will be motivated for it, and then we've got to be able to recover from that match as quickly as possible. Hop on plane, and this is one of those times where we'll actually charter our. Uh, charter jet up to uh, Lincoln on Saturday evening. Get up there, get uh, get get kind of put into into hotel, get a meal, get a little bit of uh, video and a little bit of studying in for the uh, for the players, and then uh, Sunday we uh, we go right into the uh, home of the Huskers. And this is a place where we lost last year, and uh, it was one of the you know had we not lost that game, uh, you know we wouldn't we may not have lost uh, the championship. We came in mm -hmm. second last year, so it's a big deal for us to go into into that place and win. It's always been a difficult place for us to win in the past. And again, same thing. They, they play a difficult style for us and we're going to have to be able to fight through that to uh, get any kind of positive results. And you know, this is the uh, time of the season where uh, we hope that this difficult non-conference schedule pays off for us and that the lessons learned can be lessons that we can apply right now. You mentioned, you know, nobody's won more Big 12 trophies than the Aggies. Well, a target on your back comes with that. What right. does it take for a team to play with everyone aiming at them? As again, you are the prohibitive favorite in the Big 12. One more time. Right. Well, it's it. Uh, you know, and we're we're excited about that. We I think the players, uh, you know, come here with expectations of uh, of competing for championships, whether they be conference championships, national championships, and we want to. Uh, you know, that's something that's always been very important to us to to be able to play every game like it's a championship match and. You know, everyone we play comes into it like that. So if we're not ready for it, we'll take our licks. And we've got to, uh, you know, we've, we've got a team that has a lot of senior leadership on this side it's a, and a team who's, who hasn't won a, the title since 2007. So uh, getting ourselves back to the top of the pedestal, you know, we, go in, we won four in a row. We won 2004, 2005, 2006, mm -hmm. 2007, and then uh, disappointing years in 2008 when we came in second and uh, 2009 when we came in second. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, 
I know our players are, are motivated to try to get back to the top of the top of the heap. All right, we thank you for the time and excited to see your team in Big 12 play coming up. G. Guerreri, right here on the Aggie Soccer Show. We will see you next week.